news. Hello everyone and welcome to the Red Men TV. It is the build up show. Um I feel like sorry, I feel like I'm like behind an eclipse or something and you guys are enjoying some late autumn early autumn sunshine here. Anyway, um hi. Not so much for podcast listeners there. It's a very visual or the people in the room, what are you talking about? These are all like look all sunny and happy, and I look like I'm just sat in a hole somewhere. It's fine. Um, My office is there, and there's been a cloud up all day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we went out. We, we, me and Ross went out to Anfield for two hours in the pissing rain, and still our mood wasn't as dampened as, uh, as Chris Bay Jackson's been today. He's, he's, had a, he's had a tough all day, Chris. So send some love in the comments, please. Uh, right, Liverpool, Manchester City in the Premier League. Um, massive, massive game of football. Um, Ross Chanley, um, it is the biggest game of the season since the last biggest game of the season, which was Chelsea a few weeks ago. Yep, I feel sick. <laughs> <laughs> I do feel sick. Yeah, it's just... You've caught a cold while you've been out in the rain, have you? No, maybe. If not from Tom, then definitely have definitely been in the cold, wet, ruined trainers in the building site. Um, no, yeah, it's just it's a huge game. You always get excited for it, and you always get pumped up for it, and it always end up being a, a drab nil-nil. However, um, I think like to think we've got a slight advantage of being at Anfield because they tend to shit themselves quite a little, a little bit mm. don't they? which will be interesting to see how that works out yeah without, without doubt it's um, like anything because there's always nerves around Man City because the boss and they've got loads of boss players and they've got a good manager and he comes up with new approaches and blah 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 but also I do love playing Man City at Anfield I do Mate, I adore it I really really enjoy it and I am going to enjoy it a lot more this season than last because we're going to be there. Yes. And that's the big thing. And that's why we it, they find it difficult and I'm feel it is because we're there. Yeah. We're screaming, we're singing, we're shouting, we're supporting our team. Mm-hmm. And I cannot wait because, listen, I, I don't like Chelsea. You know, they're, they're a historical rival now from the last sort of 15, 20 years. But right now, the last few years, City's been the game. Yeah, City, uh, they've been the rivals. But if you beat City, you beat you win the league, yeah. and that's been proved by you know us winning the league two years ago by beating them. Yeah. Um, and and that's what we've got to do again. They still no. Everyone can talk about Chelsea, and they're a good side, and they're going to be up there at the end of the season. But for me, if you finish out of City, you win the Premier League. Yeah, and ultimately, in, in all that. We're not playing Chelsea this week, so they they may or may not be up there. That remains to be proven. Their overall quality, I, I agree. I, I think they're fantastic, and it would be weird if they weren't given the quality they've got. But what they are one injury away, Chelsea, <laughs> to Lukaku from having the same side as last season. It's a good point. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's a good point. But the, the city, the city stuff is is that you know Chris is right. City, City should win the league every season. Um, because of how they're set up, and that's just the way that's the way things are. They've got they've got those advantages, and some of the, you know they, they, you can spend the money wrong, and you could have the wrong guy in charge, and that's not be the case. Well, no, but true. But what I mean is, they've gotten their recruitment largely largely right because they've got they've assembled that squad. They didn't just they just happen upon the players they've got. They didn't happen upon Guardiola. They've built that. They've got they've got that thing going for them. It's great, and that's the the point about that is that they are they're a known entity to us, and they I know know that they will be right up there at the end of the season and then if they're not I will be pleasantly surprised but that's the point about this is that we know how vitally important this game is you can't afford to lose this it's Anfield mm. moreover because you can go to the you can go to the Etihad and lose yeah. because they, you know they would be expected to win that yeah. this is your big one this is why Pep, cha- Pep changes tactics to come to Anfield because he even he knows how important this game is yeah I think the timing's really important as well obviously they've had a tough week probably one of the toughest weeks you can have Obviously, they beat Chelsea, which is a really good result, but obviously they lost to PSG. What does that do for morale? But also, it's going into international break of going... Liverpool want to be top of the table going into that first time to break and then you've had your first bank of fixtures you look back you pick through what happened what was the good parts what was the bad parts and then you go into the next going, okay Sam we're four points clear we beat Manchester City your morale is then through the roof um, but I think just on the Man City stuff as much as we all take the, the piss out of them there's nothing but respect there I think on, on, mm. on a football level for Manchester City because mm. we can joke about all the money that they've spent but you both just said they are a really good football inside they've got one of the best managers in the world and despite how much money that they, they, they do spend they churn out good football still which you look at some other clubs who spend lots of money still find that a difficult task. I, I, I've always sort of thought this is that for me they never they've got loads of money and they spend a lot of money. But I know it's sort of what Guardiola always says is like we don't spend hundred million. Yeah, I get it, but you do spend fifty million on four fullbacks or whatever. Mm-hmm. But they never sign the players that you think they're going to sign. Yeah. They don't go out there like let's use Man United as an example. There this season, 
chunk chuck hundred million at Sancho, chuck Ronaldo loads of dough. Um, Rafa Ran. Rafa Ran. These are players that are blindly obvious. Upper Mancar- the Upper Mancarnos of the world. The ones that everyone thinks they didn't. They went and got Ruben Dias yeah. that no one was talking about. And he's the one. And before that, it was I'm Emmerich Laporte. Yeah. And and he was not the like the most sought after centre half in world football either. So they 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 clearly identify players that they think are going to work. They don't mind spending the money on them. Mm-hmm. Just like Liverpool didn't mind spending the money on Virgil van Dijk because it was the right player. I, I just feel like Man United do it a different way. They just go short by value. Go ahead, I'll oh, have a little Man bit United here. do it in a in a. You know, in a an ultimate team way. You know what I mean? They do it in a footy manager way. They do it in an old school sticker trade play, trading card kind of way. Man City do it in a, in a wise way, but what they all do, and which is why they're all loathsome in their own ways. For City, United, and Chelsea, is that the way they write off expensive mistakes. That that's the that, that's the real difference. But but equally, you know, because I mean, I was looking at there. They've got obviously Mendy's out, which we can't talk about. But they've got um, Zinchenko. Potentially, it looks like he's going to be out as well. Just got Joe Cancelo at left back, you know. That's like that's he effectively, you know, is he the third choice? I mean, he's, you know, the days when he's the first choice, but they've done that for years. The fullbacks has been a bit of a joke, and if they'd done it in any other position, I think people would have cared more. But no one cares about fullbacks, and no one cares when you spend 20, 30, 40, 50 million pounds on fullbacks and then get rid of them the next season and buy another one. Um, but what they've done this season, which I think is interesting, Chris, is I think this is the first time that people have paid people are paying attention to City in a negative way. And Jack Grealish has done that because when you go out and you spend that money and when you go out and you court Harry Kane in that way as well and Harry Kane isn't just Tottenham he's owned by the whole country because of the England thing um, apart from you know little corner up here yeah yeah absolutely you can give a <laughs> shit about Harry Kane um, just that he's taking Jordan's armband at England which is the worst part of Dimmy. it uh, yeah but the, but the point is City have actually drawn some really negative eyes for the first time so I, I quite like the Midlands now don't like them yeah <laughs> for example <laughs> and, that, and, and that's and that's a good thing isn't it I mean people are getting the thing is it gets to a point where it was nice for a few years that it wasn't Liverpool or Man United, I'm guessing, um, or Arsenal being up there for the rest of the country. Yeah. Now Man City have been there so long, you know, seven, eight years, they've been fighting for a, a Premier League title now. The people are becoming bored of them and they're becoming the institution. And that's what happens. The institution is always the one that everybody else hates, yeah. you know, because of their success. That's what we're seeing now. It just so happens that I think it was instigated by signing, you know, Villa's best player and one of England's best players in Jack Grealish. And so that, that to me, he was always a really interesting signing anyway to be honest with yeah. you especially now that he's playing the false nine yeah and, and it also the thing that it's like it's funny that's where the thing with Man City because it was you need people need them as the buffer between the teams they really hated and the and the and the banter that you're going to receive when United win the league or Liverpool win it and just that you know just having to live in that world. Um, but I like the fact that there, it's been people have been waiting like if, if it doesn't work out it, them now winning all the domestic cups like Pep was so pissed off with how little adulation he got for that. Like he was so annoyed with the fact that they did that, and that's the season Liverpool in the European Cup, isn't it? And people are well more asked about Jurgen Klopp and the European Cup, and he's like, "I just won four trophies." And people are like, "Yeah, but yeah, Jurgen yeah, Klopp there with the big ears one." Well, let's talk about that. But I like the fact that that means now it's almost like they've got to do a double or they've got to win the Champions League, otherwise it's now. It's now people are now starting to perceive that as failure, but that's pressure and that's great. I like the fact that they, they exist in a, in a world of pressure. It should make it different. But it should do when you spend that amount of money. Absolutely. About Manchester United and Solskjaer are in the same position now. As soon as they drop points, they lose the game of football. We, everyone turns to, well, you spent X, Y, Z in, in the summer. You should be doing better. But I think they can. We had to flip reverse. We're like, we didn't spend money. You should have spent money. You <laughs> yeah. should be doing better. <laughs> um, but it, it's, that's always been the case in Manchester City since they, they got they got taken over. They've had targets, dreams, and aspirations of winning multiple Premier Leagues and obviously the big one is the Champions League which is why it's still funny because that's why we're, we're, we're perceived that that's why Pep came in he can say no as much as they want but it, what, but it is yeah. because it puts them on a global scale it gets them that, that I heard rumours that Pep was trying to trade four League Cups for a Champions League <laughs> and people were like no yeah, it's not yeah. worth that mate Honestly. there's nothing you'd need about 50 it's like trying to give four of your swaps to someone for one sticky you really want why do I want four of that shite you know what I mean like, I, I know. who's going to use four Steve Stones <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that's that's what Pep thrives on and that's probably what Pep's always had in, in his management he's gone to big teams at Bayern Munich and Barcelona and expectancy no matter how much money you spend has been you need to win things you need to multiple trophies domestically and in, in, in European um, sense as well so it's just interesting the fact they lost this week for me and, and, and I'll also be interested to see if they play Raheem Sterling because that's the other big sticking point he's made the mistake of playing Sterling at, at Anfield before and you're talking about fans being inside the stadium 
like we we hound him. He makes the problem is is there's no right situation to place that. I think you've got to place you've got to got to place Dalen through it because if you start him, you he's get tried. a fast start. He's tried. No, no, exactly. To be exactly. fair, he was he was good last season. He was he? the season before at season Anfield before. when he, he was brilliant. The final like twenty minutes of that game and he tore us to pieces. He just he started deeper on the left and just started running running at us and he was very dangerous in that game. And obviously he's broken his duck. He's, he's over like that. He's over that Liverpool who have not been able to assist or score against and all that kind of stuff. But you can't. You're damned if you do, and you're damned if you don't. Because if you if you start them, then you, you're already giving us something to sing and shout and boo and hiss from kick off. But if you bring him on, and maybe our atmosphere's gone a bit flat, yeah, and you throw stale into that, it's like throwing petrol on the on a fire, isn't it? You know what I mean? It just ignites what we're what we're doing on on, on top. So yeah, it is an interesting choice. Um, I want to just very briefly look at what City did against Paris Saint Germain um, in the week in terms of lineup because I think it's quite in- instructive to what 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 they're likely to do at the weekend. Um, they went with. Um, Edison in goal, they had Cancelo, Laporte, Diaz, uh, Kyle Walker, De Bruyne, um, Rodri, I always get that confused because his name is clearly Rodri and not R. Hernandez, uh, Bernardo Silva, Grealish, Sterling, Mares, um, and then Jesus and Foden were introduced late on. Now, you, you could see a well where Jesus and Foden both start this game, of course, but there's not really... Maybe Fernandinho comes in, but there's not a, there's not lots. Again, swap a centre half. If you tell me, Chris, they're starting Stones instead of Laporte, shrug, because they're, they're both really good. They're both really good centre halves. There's not a massive amount of things that they like. You know, the, the, there's not a huge change. Now, in what's going to get involved then? Or and well, he's he, injured. He's injured, so yeah. he's not. Thank God for that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he scored two against us last time out, didn't he? In, in that four one. Eh? So, yeah. Um, other than that, I mean, I don't know, Chris. Wh- where's Foden? Let me just find out. Ah, he did because I've got this. I've got the <laughs> side up right in front of me. But that wasn't what I. That wasn't why I originally checked it. I wanted to see what date we played in because I remember getting pumped by them, but I didn't know, remember when was it, it was. February. February. It was. Yeah. yeah. It was that. It was that. It was that month. It was the. It's too soon to play Kabak game. Yeah. I think just well, after. Well, our, our, our defense. Anyway, one, not Ross because he's looking at the screen. Fab, yeah, Hendo, yeah, yeah, yeah. midfield, <laughs> Genie in the six, Thiago, Kurt Jones. Oh, I, yeah, so I mean, it was a uh, and Allison wasn't great that game either, was Allison he? Allison had an absolute stinker that game. Let's let if he just doesn't do that, that will help tremendously. But before that, 17 games without a winner, Anfield, they were. 12 losses, 5 draws. There was a lot of that last season, wasn't there? I mean, the boys in blue uh, across, the, across the way would probably have a, a, a little memory about how Anfield was a, a touch more favourable for them this year. But good. You know, again, we just not to get lost in the obvious jokes, but you can't go at one show to what Man City and not make jokes about them and their stadium and the amount of people that fill their stadium. But I, I do genuinely think, I think they, they're a team primed to play an empty stadium. And again, let's make the, oh, the empty ad jokes. That, obviously. But... They are. They've got brilliant players, and they play a ruthless brand of attacking football, which is, doesn't matter whether you've got a full stadium or not. If you're playing teams that you're meant to beat, and it's for the same reason Bayern Munich handled it as well, because I think they were particularly set up that way. But we weren't. But I do think they struggle in big, in big atmospheres, and that's why I think we often get the better of them at Anfield. And I think we've seen them go to uh, go to those it's games. Probably and also them. why they don't haven't won a Champions League. Yeah. Because you can't get to that stage of the competition without surviving in those in those kind of things. So, um, Even I'm, last year wasn't a full stadium, was it? No, exactly. Yeah. And I'm made up, and I'm I'm just made up to be back because I want to feel, I want to get back to feeling like I don't. I felt so impotent about that game last year because I know how big. With 13, 14, when we played them on the way to the you know to, in in the run in and beat them, that was the best Anfield atmosphere I'd ever been in at the time. Because that was that was the first time we were booing and, and you know really giving it the beans, and it, it's been like that ever since. And I, and it makes a massive difference. I love seeing little Kev De Bruyne's face. We're on half an hour and we're three nil up, just going. Ugh. And then on six and on sixteen seventy when it's done and it's be- dead and buried, and he's like, I can't run anymore. I'm tired. I'm we're losing, and these are fucking kicking off every time I touch the ball and they're laughing when I shoot and miss and all that. And she's little, his little, oh, his little sad face. Makes me so fucking happy. It's glorious. Let's see it again. Um, right, uh, we will take a very, very short break. Not really, it's an extended break, but it's a good one. Uh, it's Ultimate Fan this week. Uh, let's see how I'm getting on with my team. Uh, we do have a trivia question. We play City so many times, I'm running out of these. Uh, how many league goals did Mario Balotelli score for Liverpool? Find out after the break. 
Hey everyone, it's Ultimate Fan Time, the incredible free game and app for you to get involved with that takes all the best parts of pack opening a la Ultimate Team and weekly fantasy football play as well. Uh, we've been constructing our team so far this season. It's going okay. Um, we've got Sadio Mane, that's a good thing. We'll see how I got on last week in a second. But yes, don't forget that if you play fantasy football and you're going to know you by the fact that maybe your season's over five weeks in, don't worry, it's weekly. So if you haven't played yet, perfect time each and every week to pick it up and start afresh really so let's look back and see how we did we got some packs to open which we'll come to but i just want to know how we got on last week last week was week six we got 44 points apparently um let's see uh, what the the table looked like shrimpsy took home 1500 quid very good for him 750 for bills d and as we do go all the way down £100 for those guys, 75 58 53 £25, pounds, all the way down to, we're still going blimey, 130th place in the league, took home a fiver for nothing, for the simple act uh, of downloading it, creating an account, starting a team up, yeah, and there you go. Let's open some packs, eh? It's the most exciting part of this. We've got two, it's saying. We've got our base pack, so when you get your uh, starter pack, you get 10 cards initially, and then every week you get a three-card pack completely for free just for basically being involved. So let's see who we've got in that. Todd Cantwell, I think we've got him already. Um, Emmy Buendia, decent. Now, we've got a goal player. We've got a goal player. Let's have a little drum roll, please. Mm, that's not a drum roll. It's a noise that I'm making with my mouth. Let's see what it is. <gasps> Patrick Bamford, we've... Do we have him? Got three cards in this one. Let's see. Phil Foden, who we've got already. Kevin De Bruyne, who we've got already. Um, and uh, Edouard from Crystal Palace. I am going to keep... Do I, do I stick with Sadio Mante? Am I wrong to double down on City and Liverpool there? I probably shouldn't, should I? Foden's likely to come. He's likely to start that game. You'd imagine he was so good against us last season. Okay, I'll, I'll keep Foden. Can I bring myself to put a City player as my captain? I am going to give... I'm going to give the captain... Oh, shit. I'm going to give... <laughs> I'm going to give the captain's armband to Phil Foden? Stupid of me. I'm doing it. I'm going to load my team with City players and hope that that sort of anti-jinxes it. Uh, I'm going to put my team out there. Screenshot your team, send it to us at the Redmen TV. You can download the Ultimate Fan app. It's dead easy. Just use the link in the video description underneath this. Uh, it is completely free to play. If you had an account with Redmen Picks last season, that account will work on this and so no more details needed from you. Uh, and yeah, come play. It's good fun. Come and try it out and see how you get on. With. Let us know in the comments as well how you're getting on. And yeah, can you put together a better team and beat me this week? Let's find out. Exactly. Hey, yes, thank you so much. Uh, do check out the Ultimate Fan. It is very, very good fun. Uh, Ross was saying you, 50 points has been your record so far? Yep, we're going to finish 650-something. Maybe 6,000, actually. Yeah. Yeah, but not good. Well, I, we need to start paying more attention to it, which we can have, because I'm, I'm clearly struggling to win. I'm, I mean, I, and this is no shock, because I'm terrible at fantasy football in general anyway, but I, um, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to rise today, but maybe we should have some personal bragging rights amongst the, okay. amongst yeah. the team. I know, 51 points. So let's see. I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll report back next, after the international break, yeah. and see who got the most points out of us. Oh, maybe the person with gold packs, Paul. That's my fan plus, baby. Um, right, sounds. Uh, the question before the break was, how many league goals has Mario Balotelli scored for Liverpool? One. A big... Six. Fat, lonely... One. He scored a grand total of four goals for Liverpool in all competitions. Um, yeah, he got, in 2014, 15, 16 Premier League appearances, one goal... I went on LFC history during the break. <laughs> cheat. Did you really? That's an absolute horrible cheat. If you're going to cheat here before the show. I didn't know the question, didn't read the agenda. Cheat. If you got that right at home, then yeah, you know far too much about Mario Balotelli. What is it? I was reading his Wikipedia just before, probably when I should have been writing more a more detailed uh, agenda, but... Um, it was him saying about how he didn't like Brendan Rodgers and Klopp. He didn't get on with them. And then there's a quote. I, think, actually, I need to see if I can find it. It's in here. It, it's a, it, absolutely amazing. There's a quote from Patrick Vieira. And it says, When it comes to Mario, I want to answer back. I'll just slam him up against the wall and leave him hanging by his collar on the coat rack. But I can't, as I'm no longer a player. Patrick Vieira, Balotelli's manager at Nice in December 2018. <laughs>
Chris Page. 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 Chris Chris Page. Chris Page. Chris Page. Chris Page. Chris Page. Chris Page. Funny stuff. Uh, right, we had a super chat uh, from Ashley Frith right at the top of the show. Ashley, thank you so much. And the question which leads us into the next section really well says, do you think Klopp will keep the same 11, Chris Pager? I do think he'll keep the same 11. The only question mark for me is the centre forward. Um, Jota for Bobby Firmino. Other than that, and having now done my starting 11 before this show for a change, which is quite nice, everyone should should know, because if you've not watched it, watch it. Uh, if you haven't watched if it... If you've not watched it, watch it! If you haven't watched it, I'm, there's going to be no point, because I'm going to tell you what the side is. <laughs> well, I've just told you, in fact, haven't I? Um, for me, I'd play Bobby, but I think Klopp will play Jota. Ooh. What do you think? Bobby Firmino, Diogo Jota? I th- well, put your hands together. Think... Do you though? Bobby, Bobby, I think he starts Bobby. It's, a, it's, it's pretty much the same, isn't it? If, as long as you've got one of those four which is try and tire out their defenders and you bring another one that's fresh, that's the target, I think, for, for, for Liverpool. Yeah. Um, whether Bobby's fit and fresh enough because he's not as much game time as Jot is probably only, only question of that, but I think I'd be happy with either of them. I think it's a nice little problem to have. Bobby, just, yeah. Bobby with his, with his press, you know, do we want to go and do that? And he, he wants to start. He wants to be the, the, you know, the trigger for the press. Go and do that. But Jota can do that role as well. But Jota, you know, didn't even Jota. He's got he's got slightly different runs, and he can get in behind. <laughs> Sorry, not the child. Not, <laughs> the runs. <laughs> <laughs> not the runs. He's got slightly different runs, which I think might come useful. Just for, just some of these, sometimes these things get lost in translation. Yeah. he's basically talking about having. Diarrhea. Diarrhea. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. So one thing I, I did think and why why I would go for Bobby as a as a as a reason is Trent's not there. So with Trent not being there, you attack an outlet on that right hand side is different. You're not gonna have someone whipping in crosses. And I think the front three, the interplay between the front three is better with Bobby Firmino than it is with Diogo Jota. Those little one twos that Bobby and Matt Salah play or Bobby and Mane play, they're not they're not the same with Jota. He's still all right at it, but you don't see us doing those little one twos on the edge of the area. And I think without having Trent Alexander Arnold there, you might need more of that. Mm. Yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a bit of a conundrum, isn't it? Because I, I I always wonder with what we do, and I think we've we've started to change. We've had a lot of chats about this lately, Chris, about like changing the midfield dynamic and, and looking to get more men up in, in the attack and more men supporting the supporting the attack. And whether there's a temptation to just go back to what you knew worked, but also Pep Guardiola is such a student. You know, I I, I equate him to, and I apologise to do a very dated sci-fi reference, but when when. The Borg came into Star Trek: The Next Generation. Great. You could shoot them with a, a couple of times, but they would adapt to what you had. So you had to co- constantly change what you were doing because they would just it would it would be ineffectual upon them. And I do worry a little bit about the, if you revert to type and go, let's go with the tried and tested. Have Man City have had years to try and get their heads around that now? And does Pep Guardiola more consider? Because I, I actually I've got the team here that we started not not at Anfield but in the Man in the Man City away game last season. Which was the four of them. Which was yeah, which was the one all draw where we went four two three one in that game and went Salad Salad up, up front, Bobby behind him, Jota from the right, Manny from the left, and we've seen a couple of little hints of that. Um, obviously Brentford being a being a, a reasonable example of it. We went with Genie and Hendo as the double pivot, and then it was the, it was it was Gomez and Matip, of course, because Van Dyke was out injured at that point. Um, Trent actually goes off um, injured in that game as well. Um, I think that's right. But anyway, I wonder whether Ross, we might see. That that we never really got to see that flourish enough and whether this is that that is more indicative of what our first choice approach because of course by the time we play the Man Field with a shit show Jota's injured etc etc all four would be ballsy but it's would something, be. it would be something that I'd, I'd quite like to see I'd also got the, the in my head again stuff from last season going don't play all four in case one of them gets injured and then you kind of shot yourself in the foot then haven't you but you know you, you can go all out on that it's hard because Bobby's just got come off the bench and scored two goals. So you turn around to him and say, you're not, you're not starting this game. You, 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 you've earned that. I know the goalkeeper went, went walkabouts like, but mm-hmm. you know, you're know you showing some sort of form. Jota had these chances and, and he missed them. Great, if he might feel a bit pissed off that he's, he might miss out on this one, but you've had your chance. You started last game, you didn't score. He's about to have two He's about to have two weeks off, Bobby, as well, because he's not been picked for Brazil. There you go, there. Um, so there's a degree to which I mean, Jota's likely to play 
every minute for Portugal because he's very important to, to what they do and he's played a lot of football for us and I don't think he would have played that much football if Bobby hadn't been injured so it's a tricky it's a tricky one I, I, I'm, the best thing is Chris shrugs the shoulders who's asked yeah. like we've got we've got Salah who's in the form of his life and I mean that by even by comparison to 17-18 he was not in this goal scoring form at the start of the season I think he had 5 and 8 I think at this is he 8 and 8 is he at this point he's 8 and 8 so far for us um, obviously he just accelerated and never stopped in, in that season that would be unreal if he manages to even come close to that again but the point is you've got Salah in the form of his life you've got Mane who's got 3 so far this season I think he's on 3 and 6 for us Jota's on a similar thing, and, and even Bobby's on, you know, again, his goal per minute, as we were discussing, he's got like three and 125 minutes of footy for us. That's something similar to what Leipzig tried, and it, you know, apart from the defensive mistakes that they made, it worked for him. So I was just looking at them, they conceded five goals in the Champions League in, in two games. So when teams go hell for leather at them, you know, they, do, they do concede. I think they've only conceded one in the league. On, on the I don't, the I don't think we are that good defensively this season, to be honest. I, I know, like, prior to Brentford, we've. We've only considered one goal in the league, but we've Alison Beck has been the star of the show for a lot of games for us this season, and that's fine because that's why you've got a good goalie for. But I do fear if we if we go, no, our, this is not at the Champions League final where we just trust our defense is so good that we'll, Spurs are not going to touch us if we just if we just trust in what we just in the solidity of what we got. I do, yeah, I I, I it's very it's similar to be fair to what what was happening when we won the league. You know, I I know we. We walked away from that season, like the defence is amazing and all that type of stuff. But if you think about the individual games and you think about the moments within those games, that high line was questioned for a long time, up until we were probably 10 games winning on the bounce. You know, that's that's what happens when that's the style of football that we play. You can play another style like Atletico where you don't concede, but you don't score. Like It's getting that balance, isn't it? Man City have got a good defence because they take the ball off the team. It's not, and it doesn't get queried or questioned, or people don't have a don't have the ball enough to actually put them under pressure. That's why they've conceded the fewest shots. They've also got the most possession, the most passes, and everything else. Yeah. That's it. It's a, it's part of a balancing act. So that their defense, I don't think, is as good as we think yeah. when looking at the stats. And our defense, to your point, wasn't as good because. We score loads of frigging goals, and Alison Becker was saving loads of stuff. Yeah, I I think it's the thing about City for me is always you've got to get in the faces, and I don't mean I don't mean this in like you don't you don't need to try and have sixty percent of the ball, but you need to when you go you go, and you get in the faces and you do everything you can because that's the, the that's how you beat that's how you beat City. Now you can do it in the other way where you do. <sighs> And our, sorry, deep. our defense can sit deep and yeah. defend well. Yeah, it's that we choose not to. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and, and it's but it's again, it's like in terms of how you, you're shifting things for the game. We would, I, Klopp would always preference. He doesn't like shifting things for games, does he? I go back all the way back to Real Madrid, and I'm like, how can I go into a changing room and say, remember that thing we do every week that I tell you is the way to play? We're changing it for this game we because think we don't think, than you. yeah, because we don't think it's we're good enough to be, to play our way against this against this team. It's different when it's fair, his first season and he's t- he's 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 doing it every other week because he's like I'm dragging them down to our level and we're finding clever ways to do it. You don't get to the pit to the top of the mountain and 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 start to undermine what you do because there's a different mindset when when you get there. So what I mean is it's going to be a. I, I think we will. I just think we'll we will. Slob and okay. Honestly, like, yeah, genuinely. I'm, I'm fine with that. And again, it's uh, bringing back to a balance out for Liverpool. That's fine. You've got to do the defensive cover as well. With James Milner's probably going to start start at right back. Man City going to target that. Whether you know they put do double up and put you know Grealish and Sterling or whoever on that left hand side to, to try and do that. If he's got the people helping him out, which we saw Salah was doing post Brentford and for the, the game uh, uh, midweek. Sorry. Do that. I wonder yeah. how they do that though. Joss has, Joss has got it I don't into think God. they do. I don't think they do target him because they, they, they'll just play the way that they normally play. Mm. And and that means attacking down the left hand side and attacking down the right hand side. They're not going to launch balls over the top to in behind James Milner in the same way that we saw Brentford and we saw Porto start the game. It's not in their DNA. Mm. They'll build up down the left, don't get me wrong, like they always do, I think anyway. And they'll build up down the right because they trust that they don't need to do anything different to yeah, beat yeah. us. They might look, but they might. They I mean, might what yeah, what, yeah, what yeah. I mean by that is not necessarily what, you, what you're saying. What I mean is they, they. I think they would, If you've got to pick somewhere to target and whether that's they naturally play down the left more than whatever, it will be because you'll want to isolate James.
James Milner and you'll want Raheem Sterling in foot races with, with James Milner because that's what of course you would because he's dead fast compared to James Milner and Grealish on the inside of that channel yeah, ex- well. and so there's a chance because we've seen them do that before when, when they've put Sane and they've told um, David Silva to really yeah. go and get around Trent try and cause him problems so you would you would logic would dictate if you're going to pick on someone you'd pick on the 35 year old midfielder playing at right back and that makes perfect sense especially when you think your weakness is your left back yeah yeah and so you keep him back keep him pen back absolutely yeah it's a, it's a really good well you say that I mean it's, they're playing Joe Cancelo there so it's probably not any any great any great weakness but also we they know full well that Liverpool like to get the full-backs up and when we get our full-backs up, when we're brave enough to get out of our half of the full-backs, that's very difficult to undo because you're spending more of your time doing this than being being out throwing punches. But it wouldn't surprise me if he tried to do something because we've seen them try Grealish at midfield and you've got Stale in there and maybe they say that and they say, right, I will put Grealish in midfield and I will put Stale on the left and we'll just say, go and float around Milner because, or maybe... It's just a pure Grealish thing because he's so good in 1v1 situations of going past his man. He's the most fouled man in the universe. James Milner's the opposite of that. And James Milner loves yellow cards. And it's away from Van Dyke as well. So they've got options there, certainly. The other one, I guess, is midfield. Um, I can't see how Curtis Jones doesn't start this game, but until we see him start this game, we won't... No, I think we. I, I mean, I did a the JNO Insight show with Neil Jones today, which is streaming on the RedmanTV.com. Not really interesting stuff, actually. A couple, a couple of transfers that people have been linked with, um, but also we we had a chat about Kurt and how he with Harvey Elliott. We were shocked. We were a bit. I say shocked. Yeah, a bit when he starts Chelsea. That was like, oh shit, this kid is for real. Jurgen Klopp clearly rates him. It's a slightly different circumstance because it's really probably Curtis or Naby. For this, mm. you'd imagine. Um, but I think if he gives Kurt Jones, he fully deserves it, by the way. But if he gives Kurt Jones this game, particularly because he's played, that'll be three on the bounce as well for him. Four. Well, sorry, in the, in the build up to it, um, that will be a massive, what a massive like yeah. vote of confidence for him. Yeah, I think he's been part, part, partly unlucky because he got like clattered in the pre season game, didn't he? Which kind of set him back a little bit. Maybe yeah. things might have been different, we'll, we'll never know. But again, as I said before, you know, Bobby's just scored two goals. He's in the, put in contention. You've thrown your name in the hat for it. As long as he's not going into training thinking, oh, I'm starting a Man City game. We've referenced it this week already. You've got to work hard in training. No, you can't just turn up in, in the game in Porto and think and think you're there. But he must have seen Thiago's out, Elliot's out, Naby kicked the grass and, he, and he's out. There's an opportunity here for me to kind of state my claim or certainly put my name in there, the Porto performance. has completely done that for me. Personally, <coughs> excuse me, I'd, I'd start him. Yeah. Because... Um, I think he deserves it and I think I think we highlighted him on one of the shows earlier this week is the fact that he backs himself and his arrogance and when you come up against Man City I think you pointed out you know the way that he runs with the ball the fact that he, he opens up options for himself these games are on on moments and you've got to pick your moments and you've got to get them right I back him to do that yeah I think for me the big thing and it's something you sort of mentioned before Paul is like we've played them enough times now He's the X factor. That's the that's the difference in Liverpool this season. Is the midfield is playing in a different way. Certainly, that left hand date is certainly playing in a different way. When Kurt in there, um, City won't have played that. I haven't played that before, even though Kurt's come up against them before. This is a, a confident Kurt, Kurt Jones, and you know, w- will he make life difficult for Kyle Walker in that right hand side of their defence if he shifts over there and so it looks for sort of Bobby or Jota or Mane, whoever's starting over there, and just attacks them in a different way to we've attacked them before. I think it's a, it's again psychologically and how you're managing the squad. I, I think if it's if Naby comes in. I think that's sly on Kurt, unless there's just you know, unless there's other factors of play. And again, it's how they've been training in the days in days afterwards. Of course, will play will play a big part in this. I think the only way you don't start Kurt is if you start Bobby and you start him. You play four two three one and you play and you play in all four of the lads. And I think that's probably the, one of the which few leaves Hendo and Fabinho exactly. And it's one of the few circumstances where Kurt will probably go all right, fair. You know, because I get that, I get it. We're doing something. Different. Someone on the starting eleven said, "What about Kurt in the ten? And I was like, "Ooh." Quite like that, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, again, it, it's he, not not as a, he's not done it as a fixed ten, has he? But I mean, when you think about where he's been playing the last few games, apart from the random six against Norwich, he's played left and right. He's gone across across that zone, you know, in behind in behind the front three or whatever. So you could do a little worse. But I, I just like what I like about him, and particularly if you've got Kyle Walker playing, no one's beaten Kyle Walker in a foot race. Literally, 
like it's not it's it's not happening there's no we don't own anyone who can do that so the only way to do that is to is to cre- you've got to create you've got a workspace you've got to create space and you've got to overload them because I, it I, there are, it does have limitations and he does have brain farts periodically and stuff and I want him dealing with Curtis Jones I want him dealing with Manny and I want him dealing with Andy Robertson and saying okay well if we put you one again we put you one v one you're gonna you're gonna get to the ball first but while you're all making but you can only go with one of us. So great, Manny's making a run, and all of a sudden, Curtis Jones, like we saw it against Brentford, and we saw it in, in, in the build-up to the first goal in, in midweek. Well, let Curtis have a run at the box then, and see what he can open up. I would, you know, in an ideal world, Curtis sticking one in the far top bin, <laughs> but maybe asking yeah, Porto was just a sighter. Yeah, and, 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 and Brentford as well. You know, let's face it, yeah, deflected. And, and goes in, saved by the goalie. Third time's the charm. Far top in, a la Everton, be made up. It'd be a big test for him, wouldn't it? You know, it, it, we mentioned Brentford Porto. Obviously, there was Everton in the was it FA Cup, wasn't it? Obviously, linking all these games that he, he kind of played, and obviously there was a chunk of last season which he had to play, which I think he was hindered because of the circumstances around him. Man City's the next one for him, the next big test for him. He can turn up in that game and perform, and he's elevated himself on a different level, isn't he? That's it. There's a difference, you know, between. Is Kurt Jones the seventh midfield choice midfielder in our squad? Not and he's anymore. just well, no, but you know what I mean. But like when the pecking order gets set, when everyone's fit and available, what is he? Is he a young kid who is fine to you just drop him in here and there, or is it go time for Kurt Jones? So he's in until he's not in anymore, until he's not able to be in anymore, and then someone else can come back in. Um, and this game will tell us a lot about that because if he's able, let's be honest, he, he could put a seven out of ten in this game. And you know, and, and as long as everyone else is doing the business, that's probably fine for a twenty-year-old kid in such a massive game of football. If he gets any more, like if he gets an assist, or he gets, a, or he scores, or he just puts in a fucking brilliant all-round display, I, I don't see how you get him out. Because like, I love Thiago, what a talent, but he's only going out on rotation, isn't he? And that's not his fault, exactly. And that's you that. gave me very star, uh, very uh, vibes of Starship Troopers there. Like you're my lieutenant until you know I find someone better or you die. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Curtis Roughnecks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um yeah, definitely. Um so yeah, obviously there's some uh, some some concerns in terms of Liverpool and availability. We know Thiago won't be available for this, we know Trent won't be available for this, which I've been having the mill in the conversation. Um Nico Williams will be back in contention. Be interested to see whether he's on the bench. You'd imagine he will be for this one. I don't think I d I didn't have him on the bench, I don't think, for this really? one. No, because this is there's only nine. <laughs> <laughs> just the nine, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, someone's gonna, have, people are gonna have to start missing out. It's mad, and yeah. we've already got lads who are missing out to injury. Um, I had Minamino and Arrighi on the bench. Yeah, both of them. It's more than and, jo- and Bobby. <laughs> yeah, well, it'll be. You imagine it'll be. It's it's the centre. I think it's whether he thinks Gomez is me back up right back, or is or is. Or Bradley's me back up right back. I can't see Bradley, but yeah, it's, I thought it's... Gomez and Canati give you options. Chima Cash obviously gives you options, yeah. And then it's about Keita, uh, Minamino, Origi, and Firmino probably. Ox maybe mm-hmm. as well. That's probably all nine of them, isn't it? With the goalkeeper, yeah. It's um, yeah, it's uh, there's some interesting decisions to be made from the from Jurgen and the team in advance of this game. Right, we're gonna have a little look at the other Premier League fixtures. Like he was really, he was really mm, asked to nobody. be honest, but um, um, we will see. Oh wow. United are playing Everton. You know that? No. Nope. I had no idea. There you go. Half 12 kickoff on Saturday. United versus the Ev. That's a big game of is football, that a, isn't it? Old Trafford. Is that at Old Trafford? The yeah. second best Ooh. teams in Liverpool and Manchester going head to head on the, it's like the when weekend. you the 19s play a European away before the big one, isn't it? <laughs> <That> <laughs> <big> click, <yeah. laughs> um, wow. Rafa Benitez. Managing a, a, a team on Merseyside against the Man United team with Cristiano Ronaldo in. There's some defo nostalgic vibes, nostalgic vibes there. I wouldn't shock me at all. I mean, Everton are still. I, I think they're still without. Hey, there's no a Brighton top of the league. Yeah. No, never happened, did it? Funny that. <laughs> I got so much pelters at the weekend for being like, oh, Liverpool top of the league. Brighton can go, Brighton can go top if they win. All right, well, let's chat about that when Brighton go top. Brighton didn't go top anyway. No. Um, I, um, I don't know where So who's top at. of the league? Liverpool. Liverpool? Liverpool, Liverpool top of the league so far. Um, right. Interesting, isn't it? Ross, Manchester United versus Everton. Yeah. What do you reckon? Um, Man United to Spafford, 91st minute goal. 
I, I would be funny though, and I, and because I, I really can't see Everton. What was it last night? It was like ninety five. Yeah, something like that. that it's just how much United win games at the moment, isn't it? And for all the last season, to be perfectly honest, I think that's how they're going to come unravelled. Honestly, is that that fine the knife? Out. Na, na, yeah, that knife edge of your late goals. Eventually, that just doesn't work. Well, hadn't he lost two on the bounce at Old Trafford prior to? Yeah, West Ham and Aston Villa. Yeah, mm-hmm. prior to the Champions League one. So their their Old Trafford form hasn't been great. Oh, this is what I was saying. Um, before their game in the Champions League is someone's like oh, I want them to lose I'm like no 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 because that really does highlight it if you lose three on the bounce at Old Trafford like hello I'm shit type of thing for Ollie's like no 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 put that sign away Ollie get a win uh, yeah. however you can and just keep it going a nice draw where they feel like they're hard done by it'd be great Everton, Everton got a couple of injury issues as well, well they've, so had major, they've got no injuries. squad depth whatsoever yeah they may made major I mean Solomon Rondon might be up to speed by now but obviously he's still very much Rondon can be up to speed he's still shit well he's making the numbers up oh, he's, <laughs> he's, he's making five. the numbers up stop saying things about Everton players yeah okay um, yeah um, oh, do you want to say actually Jack Richardson just sent a super chat saying thank you Jack uh, just left work in rainy West Yorkshire it's rare that I catch these build up shows live so just wants to check in hope Chris is having a better day I am now thank you for yeah the now, that we, now that you've got out your office and you're just having a being yeah, a normal, not looking a normal at life. two screens of Excel fucking things that make me want to die <laughs> And also the build-up show is not three days earlier. Not that we've moved it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, nice yeah. and spaced out. Not, and all yeah, good. not half eleven in the morning. Yeah, well done, yeah. very good indeed. And, and just, just so, so you know, it's taken me three years. It's absolutely <laughs> pissing down here as well. It is. It's yeah. it's, it's, it's bad. Um, actually, on a point that I mentioned at the top of the, the top of the show, me and Ross went down to Anfield for the to see the first spade in the ground on the Annie, Annie Road extension. The, that video is now live on the RedmenTV.com. It's a little extra bonus feature for our subscribers. Did you ask whether it was also the last spade that will be used? It's a good point, that isn't it? Yeah, first and last. Yeah, because I don't imagine People much. Because she's diggers, don't they? Yeah, you know what I mean? Surely like, for the finesse work. Could there be, must be a little license. Oh, there's a shortage on licenses for truck drivers and stuff at the moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah, that's it. It would be interesting to know if it was going to be the last speed. Mm. I imagine he just left Jürgen there for a bit and went right see it a bit he keep crack on well I saw that I saw a great laugh <laughs> if it rained anymore yeah. he probably would have dug himself a fucking fox uh, pit yeah. well there was a great laugh I think it was from uh, Courtney Neary on Twitter saying like Liverpool have got so little money that they're making Jürgen <laughs> to, to build the stand himself <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah that's that's there uh, right now and a whole host of other things as well uh, but we'll talk a bit about that a bit later on of course but thank you so much to Jack and yeah Chris does seem to be smiling now which is good There was a, he, was, he was in a dark place We've had, it's, been a, it's been a week of dark places uh, we've managed to just about get our heads get our heads out of them uh, the Reds being good helps certainly uh, right anyway the Premier League fixtures Chelsea Southampton yeah. um, home win you should be but obviously Southampton um, shit yeah, got, you can't got convince me Man City any other, other last week. results you can't convince me of any other results and, and you know what I hope you're right yeah I hope I'm right too um, Chelsea obviously dropping um, to Juventus in the, in midweek as well so they'll be spoiling to get back on the horse and all that I started that watching that game fuck me it was boring yeah I got <laughs> okay, 20 now, minutes I watched that I, I, I did that one moment where they had that really weird corner and they waited to Lukaku and I was like why are you working that to Lukaku if you wanted to pick one man who you need a perfect first touch from and I know <laughs> it's technically shooting and that's the best thing that he does but like Kick it to Havertz or something like you know, you know, or like kick it to Alonso or whatever. Um, yeah. Do you I, do you have a struggle on those Champions League days where I picked the wrong match consistently? Yeah. Yeah. Like, so I actually got into our Discord, our Club Legend Discord. If you remember at TheRevenTV.com, you get access to this Discord, and was like, "What's the best game to watch here?" And someone was like, "Benfica Barcelona." Benfica have just gone one 0 up and stuff. I was like, "Sad, okay." Give it a couple of more minutes anyway. You know what I mean? A couple of more minutes went. You went. I've left this game with shit. I'm like, all right. Well, I'm not taking your fucking advice. There's no uh, right answer. The right answer. The goal show. The goal show. Yeah, yeah. Because at but least. But it's two American sports for but me. That's the, but that's, that's the only good thing about American sports is that, like, you know, where all the they boil it down because look, and I'm not thinking as I mean, you know, it's so slow and stop start in American sports, whereas. The idea of just creaming off all the best bits. Uh, yeah, the goal, goal, goal show very, very much the way to watch Champions League full time because you can't win because it's like it's like picking a lane in in a traffic jam on the motorway. The fast one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you move, <laughs> you move. Oh, yeah, this one's moving. I'll yeah. go into this one, and you pick a car. Yeah, you, you go, pick a car, a, mate. I'm then, gonna beat you, and that's all. My and then you watch is. them go past you. You're like, oh, that's it. Twenty miles, mate. All I've got to do is beat you, and it doesn't matter. I'm or I'm the winner. Yeah. Um... Wolves, Newcastle. What were you going to say then, Ross? 
I put the goal show on last night and fell asleep. Okay, <laughs> so so nah, I missed, missed all the fucking goals anyway. Yeah. Burnley, yeah. Norwich, Not Jesus, night, no. poor old Norwich. <laughs> Leeds, Watford, whatever. Brighton, Arsenal. That is going to be a hell of a game of football. Brighton, Arsenal. Brighton, Arsenal. Because are, are Arsenal okay now? Are, are they good? Well, I've been saying that. I said this from in the first week of the season when everyone was laughing the kecks off at Arsenal, going out of the shite. And I was like, yeah. you put the you put the better goalie in there. You put the better left back in there. You put the better set the new centre half. Let him get up to speed and get him in there. You put Party who's the best DM. In the right there. back was really good against Spurs as well, by the way. Yeah, you know you got, but they had like four of their nailed on first team. And I know Bamiang's a, a bit. Hot and cold, or a bit of a, a bit of a knob, or whatever at times. But he put him centre forward, and he'll score goals for you. He, ju- he just will. And they and they haven't said oh, the guy hadn't gone through there yet. They've got and they're doing quite like us as well. They played a bit of uh, Smith Rowe and Odegaard together in midfield with Party behind them. That's a you know that's a bloody good midfield. Uh, Jack is out for three months now as well. Shaka, yeah. damn, that makes him better. better. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, but Brighton are. Brighton are the like the, the XG the, the 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 expected goal kings, aren't they? If they could only score goals, they would be well better than they are. But same you know, all last season as well. Yeah, it, it, yeah. But that that'll be that should be a good game for. But that's a good barometer, I think. That's a harder game. Can I give for you Arsenal, the, the just? Think. I'm an I like XG and stuff like that. But if your strike is shit, it doesn't matter because it compares strikers across all the things. So like you are comparing. Lionel Messi, for example, when you look at XG, to every other striker in Europe's top five leagues over a year period, well, he's just the best of them. Yeah. So actually, don't compare Messi on XG because he's, he's better than everybody. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. You're comparing him to the general population, essentially. <laughs> it's not good enough, is it? Yeah. And it's like goalkeepers and stuff as well. It's like, Alisson's doing better than his expected goals against. Yeah, because he's the best goalkeeper. Yeah. Of course he's going to be. Yeah. If you put an average one in there, that's how many we'd concede. Yeah. But I mean, the point of, the general point on Brighton is that they are... They create a, good, a lot of chances. They've got your forwards. Exactly. They're a good team, you know. And 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 the point is, is that you can't if you don't do the other. Th- it's not. It's all well if you don't do the chance creating thing. Well, you 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 you're definitely not yeah. going to score. What they had the is an entire year to get better forwards. Yeah, but they you know, started the season. Started the season. Yeah, nearly went top of the league. Yeah, I know. And didn't. I mean, they scored. Spares eight. Eight. Yeah. Spares. We're saying that. We're, we're saying that. But like. We were, we were laughing at Brentford not scoring loads of goals last week and then fucking banged it against those. Spurs hosting Aston Villa. That is a battle for Conference League places if ever I saw one. Uh, West Ham, Brentford. Interesting to see how Brentford do that. Don't care, really. I, want, I, I need to see, I need to know when Brentford play people that I we want them to, to beat. And this is really, this, this is, ooh, Brentford, Chelsea after the international break. First game back. Yes. Oh, lovely. Rested. No, no, uh, well, nowhere near as many internationals as the other teams. In that ground, I really just need Brentford to take points off either Chelsea or City, so I can feel better about what they did to Point us. Was a good result. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. That would be great. Um, yeah, some of the fixtures this weekend: Crystal Palace, Leicester, uh, whatevs. Um, right, let's get Crystal back. Crystal Palace win. Probably, maybe. Who knows? Also, who cares? Um, Thank you so much to everyone who's joined us. Let's have a score prediction from Chris Pajak. Three, one, home team. One nil, Liverpool. Or one one. No, one nil. Two one, Liverpool. I think. I think Man City will go up early and we'll just turn it on them. Beat them, maybe even three one. I think Joe Matip scores. Oh, wow, Virgil's first goal. I think if we win three one, Curtis Jones has scored in the game. Oh, I like that. I'll take all of them. All oh, apart, apart from the shit draw idea. Um, whatever. I can't wait. I just can't wait to have a one of them games where you're just making noise constantly for 90 minutes cannot wait uh, there'll be plenty to come around that uh, loads of extra content for you guys actually to keep you entertained before kickoff. Uh, as mentioned I've done the Geno Insights extra show with Neil Jones there's that video on the spade in the ground and the um, the beginning of construction on the Anfield road end uh, we've also got a match the experience video from Porto as well so if you want to know what it was like to be in the Liverpool end over in the drag hour where we battered them again um, then that is also streaming exclusively on the website for you guys as well and of course we've got their usual we're after free content Chris has done the start 11 prediction and Ross and Edel are doing the uh, watch along this weekend yay very exciting yeah 
Very exciting okay, indeed. Um, yeah, thank you so much for everyone who's obviously joined us here on YouTube. You guys are incredible. Uh, but if you want more from us, do go and subscribe to RedmanTV.com because it's really good uh, and it helps support the channel, which is always a good thing as well. Uh, anyway, yes, thank you so much. See you all very soon. Oh, yeah, if you become a club legend, you get your name in the end card of this video. Is that right, Si? It is. It is. Uh, here's our club legends. ta -da. Thanks so much for checking out the show this week. If you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, then do. But if you want more from us, extra Red Men shows, then go to theredmentv.com. You can support the channel at two levels by Club Captain or Club Legend tier. Both get you a full suite of Liverpool-related content, extra Red Men shows, documentaries, features, and world-exclusive interviews. And Club Legends get their names here and on the end of those videos and free merchandise as well. Perfect time to sign up on theredmentv.com.